This is Dr. E. We're talking about the section two, uh, video 2.5 in the Biodiversity Unit, Natural Disruptions to the Ecosystem. Learning objective for this section is how does natural disruptions impact an ecosystem? And basically you need to be able to look at data, analyze it, see what's happening, and look at patterns or trends. I'm going to be showing you examples of that in a few minutes. And there are basically six different essential knowledges that you're going to be needing to look at, and we're going to be hitting them. Natural disturbances are events that disrupt an ecosystem, either the structure or how it works. For examples, tornadoes, hurricanes, asteroids, forest fires, or drought. Natural disturbances can be greater than human disturbances. For example, asteroid hitting the Earth, comet hitting the Earth, killing off 90% of the, the critter species on the planet Earth is very much worse than what a human can do. It can happen periodically, episodically, or at random times. Periodic means regular episodes. For example, the dry and wet season that we saw in the Serengeti. Episodic means it happens occasionally, but at irregular frequency. For example, a hurricane hitting Louisiana. It ha it's going to happen, but how frequently is it going to happen? Exact date it's going to happen, don't know. Randomly means who knows when it's going to happen. When is um, the Yellowstone caldera going to go? When are we going to have the, the uh, next major earthquake and the San Andreas Fault? We don't know. Climate change has been happening over hundreds of thousands of years, if not longer. We just know records of it from the uh, ice um, uh, samples. It may be due to slight changes in the heat Earth orbit or tilt, or maybe the sun's uh, intensity. You can look back here and see that um, the e eccentricity, how much it looks like an ellipse, how much it looks like a circle, has changed. Okay? And when it's a little bit closer to the sun on average, it's going to be a little bit warmer, and so forth. Another thing that can happen is because of the change in temperature, we can have a change in the sea level. Why? Because the glaciers melt and basically causes a difference in sea level. We can see here with a change in CO2, a change in CO2 here, here is going to cause a change in the sea level. As you're warmer, it's going to be more a uh, higher sea. However, when it is cold, like an ice age, the water goes for away from the ocean and goes up onto the glaciers that are on land. Okay, and so again, it's periodic. It goes, comes, and goes. And with more CO two again, more CO two, we're going to have higher sea levels. Sometimes with environmental change, we are going to have habitat disruption, changes and or loss. For example, rising sea levels can have pro uh, do terrible things on estuaries and uh, coastal areas. For example, here we can see that with the rising levels, we get flooding of these and where it's basically not able to handle it because it's too much water on it. It's not used to it. The other thing that can happen, as you see in the right-hand side, is that here the photic zones change. What is going to be able to exist is too, now too far down, and therefore it's not able to exist because of not insufficient light. So not just flooding, but also the variation in light. Sometimes migration patterns may change because of natural disruptions. For example, if we know remember back to the Serengeti, because of the changes in the uh, rainy season and dry season, the uh, wildebeest will migrate to different parts so that they have enough grass to be able to survive. Another thing that happens is that ocean species may be going farther north or south. Um, uh, for example, 
uh, during an El Nino. Seals are going to be traveling farther north and farther south in the southern hemisphere to be able to get the fish. Why? Because the fish are uh, moving because of the changes in the temperature. The other things that happen is because of changing weather, migration may have to change. If we look, see here, what's happening here is back in the 1980s, the babies were hatched just enough time so that when that happened, the caterpillars would come out and they'd have lots of food. But if we look at today, because of warming, the caterpillars are coming out. And when they're no longer caterpillars, perfect size for the hatchlings, they're gone. That's disrupting those org the birds. Here is a great FRQ. Could you describe the relationship between the latitude, basically north-south, and the date of the first change in leaf color? Notice here that it is changing more than eight days versus within one day. Can you explain why you think this relationship exists? Please fill this in. And this is the end of section 2.5. Thank you.